Olim Gambia on site this morning. You've actually spent the last 24 hours in Marikana. What is the mood like this morning as the final preparations are being made for the commemorative events that are beginning later this morning? Well, then I think uh, it's fair to say that uh, the mood around Marikana today should uh, be a somber one uh, in respect of the many lives that uh, were lost in this area before during August 16 and after the 16th of August. And uh, of course, uh, many families uh, that lost loved ones are expected to be here today. And so really today is going to be a day of prayer and reflection, I think, as uh, President Jacob Zuma uh, urged the nation on Wednesday. A day of reflection indeed. You've spent quite some time there talking to some of the miners yesterday. What is their sense? What are they feeling one year later? Dan, I think uh, one really in one sentence to describe what the miners feel should be done uh, on a day like this is that uh, as I was speaking to one of them yesterday, he said to me that uh, in their view, this day should be seen or reflected upon as the days like uh, the Sharpville Day or the days like uh, the June 1976 day and so for them this is this day should be recognized as that because uh, a lot of lives were lost and I would want to think then that uh, they are referring in particular to the events of August 16 when the police opened fire and I think as your opening line uh, into the story this morning saying that uh, this was uh, the first such killings by the democratic government post-apartheid and I think no one would have anticipated that uh, something like this would happen uh, post-apartheid. Let us not forget that I mean there was a strike leading up to the tragedy at Marikana last year and one of the demands of the workers was better pay and I think at the time they were saying they were demanding a minimum salary of 12,500. Has their conditions improved? Have their conditions really improved and uh, benefiting from that? Then I can tell you without a doubt that uh, the miners, including the community, because remember, uh, the mine workers also live with uh, their families uh, in areas such as this, which is uh, uh, the Nkaneng informal settlement. And so they live in shack dwellings and they don't like that. They're saying that they live in a pigsty. And uh, if you talk about uh, the 12,500 rands that uh, they say many of their colleagues died for, they're saying that 12,500 rand has yet to be achieved. And so uh, to them, all that they bear today or all that they have to show for um, in respect of what happened last year are simply scars uh, of what happened that day. But all of what they fought for has yet to be achieved. And it's very sad that there's still some tension in the air there between the rival unions. We've been reporting that the National Union of Mine Workers will not be taking part in today's commemorative events which have been organized by AMCU. That surely is not uh, uh, something that's going to give the right kind of dignity to what was supposed to be a very somber and solemn and dignified commemoration. Well, that's right, Dan. The National Union of Mine Workers uh, boycotting this uh, event today, saying that uh, it is no longer a go it is no longer going to be a government-led process as was agreed. And uh, of course, we saw then later on yesterday the ANC in this area or in this province, in the Northwest Province, following suit uh, in solidarity with the National Union of Mine Workers, saying that uh, to them uh, they. They don't see that uh, they don't see it fit that they should be coming to reflect uh, and be part and parcel of these commemorations here today because um, in their view all that is going to happen here today is going to be a lot of grand standing by a lot of opposition parties that have been invited here and so they don't see it uh, uh, necessary to come here today they say that uh, they well aware of the plight of this area and uh, the person I spoke to uh, Dan at that time was uh, the ANC chairperson in the province Supra Maumapilo. And very sadly this week very briefly uh, uh, we saw the killing of yet another uh, union member an NUM shop steward she was killed and the police are still investigating that seems like the violence there might still be with us for some time. Indeed Dan I think uh, the 
the, the, the description uh, by one of the people I spoke to today, uh, yes, well, in the days leading up to today, as of course we've been based here, uh, just reflecting on that killing of that N NUM shop steward, that person saying to me that uh, it is really unforgivable, given that that person was a, a lady, even though she was an NUM shop steward, but she was a woman and she was killed execution style on a women's month. And so they, 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 that person then saying that uh, this is completely unforgivable what has happened here and what continues, by the way, to happen. Thank you very much. There we're going to have to leave it. That's ENCA reporter Colin Gambi in Marikana. More from him later on on Morning News today. News that moves. ENCA.com.